All right, so your teacher says, hey, I have two numbers that I'm thinking of, and they add up to this, but then when you multiply those two numbers together, they equal this. Can anybody out there figure out what those numbers are? And you're like, Psh, yeah, of course I can. Let me teach you how. So find two numbers whose product and sum is given. If you're given the sum and the product of those two numbers, you can figure out what those numbers are by doing just a little bit of math. Now, first and foremost, could you guess and check? Yes. Some of them will be more easy than others. There are going to be some problems out there where you're given the sum, you're given the product, and you can spend a little bit of time just listing out all the possibilities and find the one that matches. Now, that is not the best technique because you might be given a basic problem to start with where you should be working out the steps like I'm going to show, and then what's going to happen on a test is you're going to be given a much more complex problem where you're not going to be able to guess and check unless you're sitting there for about an hour. Okay, so let's jump into this problem. I'll show you the steps and let's get started. First and foremost, sum is 8. What you're going to want to do is use two variables. I'm going to use x and y to show this. x plus y equals 8. There's the sum. Product, meaning solution to a multiplication problem, is 12. I'm going to say x times y equals 12. Now, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take one of your equations and solve for one of the variables. I would recommend you going to the sum. Take this sum and just subtract x from one side. Now what you're left with is an equation that says y equals negative x plus 8. I like to put a little box around this information, this expression here, because what I know that is, is equal to y. I've now created an, an expression that can represent a variable. So if I want to say y right here, instead of y, what I can write down now is this expression. And what it does is it eliminates the second variable. So let me show you. I'm going to rewrite this, and instead of a y, I'm going to put this information in for it. So x times y is worth this, negative x plus 8 equals 12. So notice I'm just copying this down, but instead of a y, I'm replacing it or substituting it out with the expression found for y. I want to go ahead and simplify this, start to solve. So I'm going to distribute. I'm going to get x times negative x, which is negative x squared, x times 8, which is 8x, and it's still equal to 12. Now we can't have it equal to 12. What we need it equal to is 0, all right? Now, some teachers might just jump through this step. I really want to show you what you're technically doing here. What you're going to do is you're going to eliminate both of those terms from the left side so that on the left side you're left with a zero. Remember, we want this all to be equal to zero before we use the quadratic formula. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw a line down the middle, show those steps real quick. I would subtract 8x, cancels. Now I have a negative 8x. So now I bring this down. I'm going to have negative x squared is equal to negative 8x plus 12. Move that over, and what I'd be left with on the left side is 0, which is what I want. I need it to be equal to 0 to do the quadratic formula. So I'm going to add x squared. Inverse operations, opposite of subtracting is adding. Add x squared. Now what I have is a positive x squared. I have a negative 8x and I have a positive 12. Now what I have is an A, a B, and a C that can be plugged into the quadratic formula. Now if you don't know what the quadratic formula is, that's something you need to already have in your tool belt when answering a problem like this. You can go back and watch a previous video of mine where I teach you about this, teach you ways to memorize it, but basically what the quadratic formula is, is what I'm writing down right now, and that is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. That sounds like a lot, and it's I'm not going to lie to you, it is. But this is something you have to have memorized at this point in time in your math career. Okay, so a quadratic formula is a tool that you have in your tool belt, and we're about to pull it out and use it right now. So where does these b's, a's, and c's come from? This right here. So the x squared, that's going to be your a. So there's no number here no as a coefficient. That's a 1. So 1 is your a. 
negative 8 is your B, and 12 is your C. Now, this is like your key code. You're going to take that information, you're going to plug it into the quadratic formula, work it all out, and what we're going to be left with is our two numbers that when we add together, we'll get 8, and when we multiply together, we're going to get 12. So I'm going to go over here with the quadratic formula. I'm just going to bring it over here. So negative b plus or minus the square root of, I'm just taking this information over here and writing it down. Notice I'm putting parentheses, empty parentheses instead of variables. b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. I get asked this a lot, why the empty parentheses? Because all we're going to do now is plug in numbers for them. So I can steal those numbers. B is this parenthesis right here, and I get that number right there. So I'm going to put a negative 8 in. I'm going to put negative 8 in again here because that needs to be a B as well. Negative 8. A times C, 4 times A times C. My A is a 1. My C is a 12. And then down here, 2 times a, 2 times a. 2 times a is 2 times 1. Okay. Once I work this out, I'll be left with my solution. So a double negative, negative, or excuse me, a negative, negative 8 would turn into a positive 8, plus or minus negative 8 squared, which is going to be 64. So I'm going to draw that square root symbol. 64 minus 4 times 1 times 12. 4 times 1 is 4, times 12 gives me 48, divided by 2 times 1, which is a nice, neat 2. I'm almost done. Stick with me. I know it's been a little bit of a, of a travel to get to the end here, but we're almost done. 64 minus 48. Okay, we're going to subtract those two numbers. Let's just move over to the right so we don't run out of room. Let's write everything down as we see it, but let's just simplify inside the square root. 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 48 is 16 divided by 2. Square root of 16 is just a 4. It's just a 4. So what I'm doing is I'm either going to add 8 plus 4 or 8 minus 4 on top. All right. Hopefully you're okay with moving this information over here with me. 8 plus 4 divided by 2 or 8 minus 4 divided by 2. Those are our two possible solutions. Let's work them both out. 8 plus 4 is going to give me a 12 divided by 2. 8 minus 4 is going to give me a 4 divided by 2. Simplify these down. 6 or 2. There are my two possible answers for x. X could be a 6 or X could be a 2. Let's take a peek and make sure that it works before we finish. If I put a 2 and a 6 in, would they add up together and make 8? Yes. If I put a 2 and a 6 in, would they multiply together and make 12? Yes. So, breaking it all down for you, last bit of information that we need. You need to first write out equations for sum and product. Solve for one of the variables and then replace that expression in the other equation. Highly recommended you solve for the sum. Once you get this, distribute, solve for zero. So move everything to one side. Use your A, B, and C terms in the quadratic formula. Work the quadratic formula out to find your two numbers. All right, I know it's a lot, okay? But it is gonna get trickier than adding up to eight and uh, multiplying together to get 12. So you do need to know these steps, guessing and checking method. It's only gonna work on some of those major basic problems that you're gonna be given. When it gets more complex and you get some trickier stuff, you gotta go through these steps to figure those numbers out. Don't let your teachers fool you, study hard, and good luck on your upcoming test.